Okay, so in our first video, we introduced initial value problems and, and the approaches that we'll use to solve them. And remember the main classification, there are two of them. The main classifications are whether it's a single step method, which is what we'll discuss first, or a multi-step method, and then whether it is explicit or implicit. So for each of these methods, you can just ask yourself, is it, is it single step, multi-step, is it explicit, is it implicit? Sometimes it's in the name, as you see here, Otherwise, it'll be easy to tell. Um, and we'll walk through that, both for ordinary differential equations as well as partial differential equations. So let's start with the first or explicit method. This is the, the simplest method. It's not a very good method in practice, but it's a good way to start. So we have a first order initial value problem. du dt is equal to a function of t times u. Remember that t is the independent variable, u is the dependent variable, u is a function of t. This function of t and u could be linear or nonlinear, depending on the problem. We'll focus mostly on linear cases here, and we'll do a number of examples to illustrate this. And we also have an initial condition. So t is equal to 0, u is equal to some value, the, the initial value. So u0 is a known value. And then just as we did in the, the last video, we'll discretize time. I'll be a little bit more explicit about this now, to use an unfortunate term. So we start at t is equal to 0. That's the initial condition. That corresponds to n is equal to 0, our index, which you see here. So tn and tn plus 1. tn is the previous time step. tn plus 1 is the current time step. So n goes from 0 to 1 to 2. And then generically, as we consider each time step, we'll have the previous time, which will be t n, and then the next time, t n plus 1, and that's separated by delta t. So this will be the nth time step and the n plus first time step. So this one is known. So we know the solution at the previous time step, and we're looking for the solution at the next time step. So remember, these are marching methods. So we start with the initial condition. Based on that solution, we get the solution at the first time step, the second time step, third, fourth, and again, generically, the nth. We know the solution. We use that to get the solution at the n plus first time step. So we know the solution here and we're seeking the solution here. Now this is very important. I'm always going to use an X, so X marks the spot. X is the location where we approximate the equation. So we're going to approximate the entire equation at the previous time step. So always just look for the, for the X, make sure you're clear on where that X is, because a lot of times these will look similar or you kind of get lost, why is it un, why is it un plus 1? Just focus on where the x is, where the equation is actually being approximated. Okay, so given that we're approximating the equation here, that's going to guide us to determine how we get a method for marching forward one time step from the known time step at the x to the time step tn plus 1. All right, so here, here's how it works. We use a first order accurate forward difference, which you see here on the left. So this is the du dt term. And we're going to use a first order accurate forward difference. Now why a forward difference? Because we know the solution here, and we look forward to the solution at the next time step. So un plus 1 minus un over delta t. As usual, this is rise over run for a first derivative. And we know the u here. We don't know. We're seeking the u there. Now, this is a first order accurate approximation. Remember, it's a first order accurate forward difference. So we'll track this order delta t term through the derivation to make sure we keep on top of that. And then the right hand side is the function. So the function is evaluated at tn un. So both of which are known, so we know everything on the, the right. F evaluated at the time corresponding to n, and the u corresponding to n, which again is at this previous time step right there. 
Okay, so when we write our difference equations, we always put the unknowns on the left and the knowns on the right. It's always, the, always what we do. So the only unknown here is the un plus one that comes from here. Everything else, this is known and this is known. So all of that goes over to the right hand side and we have un plus one is equal to the un at the previous time step plus delta t times f evaluated at t and u at, again, the previous time step. Remember, x marks the spot. Now you notice what happened to the truncation error term. Here it's order delta t, but we've multiplied through by a delta t, so now it's order delta t squared. We'll talk more about that in a, a little bit. Okay, so we call this an explicit method because we have an explicit expression for u at the next time step based on u and f at the previous time step. So it's an explicit expression. You can solve explicitly for what you're looking for, which is u at n plus 1. Just a little note on notation here. So as usual, un is shorthand for u evaluated at tn. And you'll notice the use of the subscript n in parentheses. That is indicating our iteration, of, uh, sorry, our time step. So in boundary value problems, that indicated the iteration number. Now we're going to use the same notation, but it's indicating the time step. There's no confusion because they're different types of problems, but just make sure that that's clear. And there is a minor mistake here. So right here, this should be u and in parentheses. So again, we're looking for the solution u n plus 1 given the solution u n at the previous time step. All right, so look at a simple example. So du dt is equal to minus a u. So our f is minus a times u. A here is some positive constant. And then we have our initial condition, u at t is equal to 0 is u 0. So the f now, which is the right-hand side, is minus a times u. You probably remember that you can, hopefully remember from math 252, you can solve this very simply. It's just a constant coefficient linear equation. So if you do solve that, you get the exact solution, u0, which is the initial condition, times e to the minus a t. And if you remember, a is positive here, so this is an exponential decay. So it looks like this. So if I plot u versus t, it starts at u0, and then it decays exponentially down towards 0 as time progresses. So we'll, we'll look at that. We'll get our numerical solution compared to that exact solution. OK, so here's how the first order explicit method works. So we've already derived it, so we can just put in the expressions for u and f. So now we have, this is from before, that's from equation 9.5, same as we had. So we solve for u n plus 1 it explicitly is u n plus delta t times f evaluated at t n and u n. Now in this case, f is minus a times u. You see that up here f is minus a times u, so that's f. So we have a un in both terms, I can factor that out, so I have a 1 minus a delta t, all times u n. So that's how we advance the solutions, and we'll, we'll look at an example for specific a. So here we are with a is 2, all right? So a is 2, f is still minus a times u, but but now a is, is 2, and the initial condition, u0, will be 1. So now the exact solution, which we had back here, u0 is 1, a is 2. So the exact solution is now just e to the minus 2t. Again, exponential decay in time. All right, so now let's get a uh, numerical solution using the procedure that we just developed. So the un sorry, u0, the initial condition is 1, so that's the value of u at t is equal to 0. And then our difference equation tells us, given the value of u at the previous time step, what is it at the next time step? So u n plus 1, all I do is I take the previous value and multiply by 1 minus 2 delta t, and that gets me the next value. 
multiply by 1 minus 2 delta d again, and again, and again to get each successive time step. This is what we get for a delta t of 0.1. Okay, so the solid line is the exact solution, the dots are the numerical solution, and they're in increments of 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and so forth. You can see it's it's okay, it's the right trend, but it's it's you know got quite a bit of an error in there. So if you look at the error at t is equal to 2, for example, which is as far as I calculated it, the error there is 0 0.006786, which doesn't sound too bad, but as you can see, the error is definitely too large. So point one from an accuracy point of view is too large. So let's decrease it by an order of magnitude from point 0.1 to point zero 0.01. So we have the same exact solution and now again the dots are the numerical solution. There's 10 times as many dots because we've reduced the delta t by a factor of 10. Obviously it's going to take longer to compute this. It's an easy problem so it doesn't take long but it will take 10 times as long. And you can see it matches the exact solution very, very well. So 0.1 is too big of a time step. 0.01 is more than small enough. The error at t is equal to 2 is 0 0.000728, so quite a bit smaller. It's an order of magnitude, it's approximately 10 times smaller. And that reflects the order delta t accuracy. So if we have the delta t, we should roughly half the error have the error. If we go down by a factor of 10 like we did here, then we should roughly reduce by a factor of 10 the total error. And then again, this is a first order explicit method. So it's explicit. We have an explicit relationship for u n plus 1. And it's first order because we only have first order accuracy because we used a first order accurate search up oh, forward difference. Okay, we'll pick this up in the next video. We'll, we'll talk more about stability.